Howdy, Ryan Corley from hot, hot Houston, Texas. I'm originally actually from here, and I was lucky enough to get placed here uh, after I got uh, my initial offer from the FAA. I uh, always wanted to do air traffic control ever since grade school. I had a family friend of my father's that worked here at Houston Center that brought me here when I was 12 years old. My first time, I fell in love with it then and set my sights for that. To get here, I went to uh, Middle Tennessee State University, just south of Nashville. I went there to do the CTI program, was the route that I chose to take to get here. Did uh, four years of college there. I was lucky enough to get picked up by the FAA about two months later after uh, graduation which was very quick compared to some. Uh, after that, I got, went to the academy, spent 11 weeks up there in Oklahoma City, and the, uh, actually went up there in the winter time. Got a couple ice storms and all there, but made it through there, and uh, ended up back here at Houston Center. That was back in uh, uh, April of 2006 is when I arrived here at Houston Center. I uh, work here at Houston Center now on the west side, the far west side of Houston Center, that, Works uh, with uh, Monterey Center, most of South Texas, West Texas, out almost El Paso. Do a lot of military activities, um, just your regular commercial and GA flying out there. Um, the tra training when I got here, we do a different kind of training here at our facility with a couple other facilities around the, around the uh, country. We do functional training, which is a whole lot different than some of the other training that you're going to get in the centers. Uh, it's uh, where you're doing your radars and your D side positions at the same time. So you could be the first time you get to the floor after you're doing your upstairs training, you're gonna be you could be talking to a plane your first time sitting at sector, or you could be doing the D side or doing both together at the same time if the traffic warrants that, not having a D, a D side. The training when you first get to the facility and functional training, you go upstairs, you do a bunch of drawing maps, learning LOAs and SOPs, the rules and uh, regulations of what you're gonna be under, reading the point sixty-five once again and you're doing a ton, a ton of CBIs. That's computer-based instruction, just a bunch of PowerPoint presentations on rules and stuff that you have to be, become familiar with. So you get your maps and stuff done, you come back down to the floor, and then you start your, well, you go to the die sim before that, and then the die sim, that's where you're gonna do your, uh, that's, the, that's where your radar simulators are at. So you're gonna do a bunch of stuff there. You get your check mark, get passed through there. You get to the floor, you get assigned a trainer. It's actually a trainer and then a backup trainer. And then you start your, uh, your career there. It's pretty much where it starts. That's where you start talking to live traffic and working it. And like I said before, the functional training, you're talking, you're doing the D side and R side at the same time, which is, I tell, uh, explain it to people, the learning curve on that is extremely high. Once you get to the top of that, it's pretty smooth sailing from there, but it's that initial climb to the top there. It's a lot of information really, really quick. Um, let's see, I, I got involved in NACA for, uh, well, for a, a lot of reasons. I really didn't see any reason not to become involved in NACA. Getting involved in NACA for me was me having a voice in how my career is going to play out for the next 20 plus years. I wanted to have a, a say-so and a vote and have, you know, just get the best out of my out of my career that I can get. And to do that, I joined NACA to do that. NACA is the only, only w re way that you're going to get stuff, you know, get stuff done. Right. But where I see NACA going from here is our generation is going to take that torch that uh, the older generation is going to pass to us. We've got to carry that torch on and really press and hold the, the FAA accountable and stuff and make sure we get the best for, for our career, the best for our families, and the best benefits and working conditions we can get. So you and I are going to be ones that, like I said, taking that torch and running with this and making NACA even better than it is today. Uh, the number one piece of advice I can give is just be involved. If that's in NATCA and just anything at your work, be involved. You know, take this. What you make of it is going to be what's going to come out of it. You know, from here on out, how your career is going to be from, you know, day one when you get here.